Hey. What? I was thinking. Good job. I was thinking, why do people like Skyrim? It's an open world fantasy RPG that comes from a classic lineage of games with good progression, cool looking armor, fun weapons and spells, cool companions. Right. It's satisfying. I could have just gotten to that if you let me finish my sentence. Sure. Now, I want to replicate this, and I'm gonna need your help. <sighs> Alright. Since last episode, I have received hundreds of emails sending their condolences about I don't know. I just want to say he's actually fine. We have him chilling in the rejuvenation station. He'll walk it off. Anyways, why do we play games? Generally, people like certain games because they're very simply satisfying. Now, you may be saying, what are the elements that make a game satisfying? And to that I say, that's a really good segue, but you're not answering my question. Who are you and how did you get in my house? Progression is instrumental in making a satisfying game. Without anything to work towards, why play them? Call of Duty does this very well. In their campaigns, you're always making your way through a linear set of what are essentially hallways, constantly working towards your main goal of killing the big bad. Whether or not stretching the story over five years is satisfying is another debate. Cod's multiplayer is another great example of this. Not only are you constantly working towards your team's goal, whether it be capturing flag or committing mass genocide, you are also constantly using the experience in both meanings to unlock more and more things and to commit more and more mass genocide. Rhythm games are almost entirely built around progression, as your one goal is to play to the end of the song without failing while scoring as high as possible. Borderlands is another decent example of progression. Whether it be working through the story to defeat one of the best written villains ever, Handsome Jack, or leveling up to make your character become busted, or even getting the best gear for your build. Fun side quests with good self-contained stories, cool guns, and leveled areas constantly pushes the player to keep moving forward. Now you might be saying, but what about Minecraft? And to that I'd say, good segue, but I will not ask again. Please leave my home. Games like Minecraft, Terraria, and even Gary's Mod have player-created progression. You are the person that creates the goals in the game, whether it be mining for better gear, making a house from scratch, or starting a farm. JRPGs, especially older JRPGs, are a bad example of progression. Almost being forced to grind to progress at certain points can completely ruin the pace of the game. This is especially frustrating when you have to use an overwhelming majority of your resources to even attempt to progress. And despite being a massive fan of the games, this is a problem that also permeates some of Borderlands. There is no reason to use most other weapons outside of the best weapons, shields, and class mods. This could be especially annoying for those who just want to shoot things, as most of these items are rare drops that you either have to get from repeatedly killing the same enemy over and over again, or even make temporary modifications to your save file to get mission rewards over and over again until you get the item you want. Call of Duty's progression can only exist with the super tight and refined gameplay. Campaign levels are expertly designed set pieces that translate how frantic the firefights the characters get into really well, especially on higher difficulties. Fast paced, hectic, and often random feeling multiplayer paired with tight shooting mechanics makes getting the drop on someone and winning all the more satisfying. Racing games, when done right, can have a similar effect. Whether it be in a career mode where you're constantly building up your record and sometimes your team to be the best, or in a traditional multiplayer environment, outmaneuvering and outsmarting opponents will almost always feel good. Finding games also excel in this area. Beating an opponent, whether it be on your level or someone who's better than you, will almost always feel good. Pair this with cool fighters with cool moves that feel rewarding to land and you've got a hit. And let's be honest, parries will never not be cool. But, for as much as I love Morrowind, come on. Is this interesting? If you don't have feedback, whether it be through rewards, knowing you hit someone, or even punishment, whether it really affects you or not, how do you know you're progressing? Again, Call of Duty has this down to a T. You always know for a fact you leveled up, because not only does it give you this loud as hell pop-up that is always satisfying, it straight up shows you what you unlocked and how much XP you gained after you finished the match. And how could literally anybody forget hit markers? That sound is so unmistakable, and it is so well designed that it has literally cemented itself in internet culture. 
Dark Souls also nails feedback. Hitting an enemy creates the super meaty hit sound and a squirt of blood. It also doesn't hurt that each enemy has its own individual health bar that you can see go down when you hit them. Interacting with the menu creates a unique and big sound that plays every time you hit a button. Dark Souls has feedback even more intertwined with gameplay than that though. Rolling visually and through audio shows how high your encumbrance is. Even the massive you died serves as an unmistakable piece of feedback. This feels slow, but come on. If you didn't see it, Mr. Black Tiger just hit something there. You probably didn't see it because of the terrible muddy visuals. Throwing flashbang! Super Mario 64 and Sunshine still hold up not only because of their super refined tight gameplay but because of their visuals. Mario 64, despite being 25 years old now, still looks okay thanks to its hyper cartoon art style that exaggerates everything, which works around the low poly graphics of the N64. Super Mario Sunshine, while looking significantly less like a bowl of mashed potatoes, still makes use of the hyper exaggerated art style that to this day keeps the Mario series looking as bright and cheery as 64. Left 4 Dead is another great example of visuals. You know, you hit a zombie because not only do they do the recoil and fly backwards after getting a face full of buckshot, but the game uses gore effects to its advantage, not only making it clear whatever you shot is dead, but as part of the atmosphere. Left 4 Dead takes advantage of the Source Engine's gritty and sort of drab color scheme by presenting most of the levels in a creepy dark atmosphere that raises the tension of the game, and makes getting through the level all the more satisfying. Flash games, however, may they rest in peace, have not held up in the graphics department at all. Blocky, hideous outlines on literally everything just make them horrid to look out nowadays outside of nostalgia reasons. And they are painfully a product of their time, with it being abundantly clear that these were meant to be viewed in a 4x3 low resolution. But hey, who am I to judge the all-time masterpiece Bush Shootout? This is a real game that many people played. While all of the games I have mentioned so far do this very well, my favorite example is Portal. Every level is a puzzle with their own unique solutions that are constantly building and building upon the last challenge. This all culminates in one of the best boss fights in gaming, where you finally defeat the entity that has been taunting you all this time to gain your freedom. So Todd, what have we learned? What? You weren't listening, were you? Nope.